What's going on, nerd community? Welcome back to All About Nerd. My name is Mario, and today we're going to be doing another edition of This Week in Nerd, where we talk about some of those biggest stories that are circulating in the nerd community that you fellow nerds may enjoy. Last week, we got to see a teaser video that director Matt Reeves released of Robert Pattinson and what he looks like in the bat suit. But this week, we got to see more pictures that were released of the bat suit, albeit not with Robert Pattinson in it. It was the stunt double that Robert Pattinson is using as the Batman. And we finally got to see a good glimpse of what the entire suit looks like in a much better light. I think it resembles a lot the Batman year one, which a lot of people are making comparisons to. But another comparison that people are making that I think actually has a huge resemblance to is to the Daredevil costume from the Netflix series. Now, it doesn't bother me that much that the suit resembles the Daredevil suit because of the fact that the Batman Year One suit does look like this suit. And I hope that this means that they're kind of going to follow the Batman Year One story because it's the chronicle of what Batman did in his first year as a crime fighter. Hopefully, it doesn't mean that we're going to get another origin story. We don't need another Batman origin story. We don't need to retell the story of how he became Batman. I just want to know how he's doing as Batman. If you're going to tell me about the very first year where he started crime fighting, that would be pretty cool. But I really don't want to know how his mom died in this version of Batman. I don't really care about how his dad died in this version of Batman. We already know what happened. Now, if you're not familiar with Year One, it was a story arc that was written for Batman by Frank Miller. Frank Miller is most famous for his graphic novel of Sin City, which was adapted into film. And I hope that they do a very good job of adapting this Frank Miller story because previous Frank Miller stories that have been written by him have been adapted into film. And I think they did a good job with them, but I think that they can do a better job, particularly with Batman, because we have so much material to work with, so much to pull from, that I hope that they do stick to the Year One story, but that they do a good job of bringing in elements from other stories as well. And I gotta say that I'm kind of digging the way that the Batman looks in this movie. I do like the suit. I think it looks very basic. I think that's what hints me that it is gonna follow the Batman year one, particularly because if that is Catwoman next to him and she's got a very basic suit, well then again, this is Batman starting out. So hopefully Catwoman's also starting out. Maybe she still has to get the new suit or maybe this is barely what she's gonna become, Catwoman. We don't know anything about the plot of the movie just yet. But the one thing that I did like the most was the fact that the Bat cycle already had like the Bat horns already in the front of the board cycle i think that's actually pretty cool um, it looks very basic it doesn't look too techy but then again batman does surprise us with the stuff that just comes out of the sides of vehicles so we hopefully get to see something cool that's just more than the typical stuff that already just gets thrown in there from the original movies where the car is super decked out and super robotic and all other stuff but the fact is that we've already gotten a lot of cool gadgets in all the different batman movies and what i really want to see is a good batman story because that's the one thing that's really going to make or break this movie in my opinion I think we're all tired of the reboot after reboot after reboot and getting another Batman again. So what we want is a good Batman story that's going to be successful so that we can continue this particular franchise of Batman with Robert Pattinson in it, hopefully for at least a trilogy if the movie is successful. And also another thing to note, that stunt double, is that Ben Affleck? Because it looks like Ben Affleck is Robert Pattinson's stunt double. I mean, I don't know. To me, that the stunt double just has a really white chin, which looks like Really, it's like Ben Affleck, you didn't want to do the movie yourself. You just had to go in as a stunt double. But obviously, it's not Ben Affleck. And what I really hope that we get to see soon is Robert Pattinson in brighter light in the full Batman suit. Because the stunt double looks like he's twice the size of Robert Pattinson. So I'm assuming in whatever scene that they were filming right here, they're going to have to digitally shrink him. Because unless Robert Pattinson, which I do know that he is getting jacked up for this movie, I don't think he can increase in size as much as this stunt double actually looks. Because like I said, this guy looks like if he was Ben Affleck and Ben Affleck was massive as Batman. So I think that they're going to be a lot of special effects in this movie. Um, I think they should have picked somebody that was more to Robert Pattinson's size so that they don't have to change a lot of stuff. But I mean, I mean, if it works for them, it works for them, right? But let me know what you guys thought about the pictures that were released about the Batman. Do you like them? Do you like the Bat Cycle? Do you think that this is going to be a year one story? If it is, are you happy with that? Are you not okay with that? Do you want an original story? Or are you happy that this may be a Frank Miller adaptation of the Batman? And another major story in the realm of DC Comics is that AT&T, the parent company to Warner Brothers who owns DC Comics, says that they may shut down DC Comics for good. Now, I'm not talking about the movies or the TV shows that are already in production. What I'm talking about is the printed media of comic books. Information has come out that AT&T has said that if the 5G event does not work, this may well be the end of DC Comics. Now, when I say 5G, I'm not talking about the wireless carrier signal. What I'm talking about is the 5G 
fifth generation reboot for DC Comics. Under Dan Didio, who was pretty much the head of the DC comic books division, DC Comics have already gone through two different reboots. The first of these reboots, and my personal favorite reboot, was the New 52, which started off with Flashpoint. This pretty much saw all of the comic books in the DC spectrum start off with a number one release for every single character. Meaning that if the comic book was previously on issue number 943, it started back on number one with the New 52. The New 52 also saw some major changes to the most iconic characters in the franchise like Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman. As comic book sales started to decline again, DC went for another reboot called Rebirth. And this was a reboot that saw some of the original characters from the classics come back into the New 52 series and replace those characters with the New 52. This was very confusing for a lot of fans, confusing for me, because it was difficult to follow the storylines that DC was developing at the time. However, it was a very successful venture for DC. Dan Didio was hoping to do this again for the sales of DC comic books by rebooting it another time, this time with the fifth generation called 5G. Now, the reason why at t was really worried about this reboot was because of the fact that the changes that were going to come in this reboot were going to be major. We were going to see a lot of the major classic characters like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Flash. They were going to be replaced by younger characters, people that were going to take up the mantle of that superhero, keep the same name, but it was going to be a different person. And at t was worried about this change because of the fact that they have a lot of success going on right now currently with the TV shows, which feature the classic characters that everybody knows from the comic books. Although the movies haven't been as successful as they want them to be, they still have made them a lot of money. Take Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Joker as an example. And it seems that they are doing very good in just making these movies better. And the most recent Harley Quinn movie, which was not the moneymaker that they hoped would be, was a critical success. And DC has been doing a great job with its TV shows in the Arrowverse and as well as in the DC streaming service that they have. Not to mention that they have other properties that have been licensed out to other networks like Netflix, including Lucifer. All of these shows have been very successful and have been renewed time and time again because the fan base is there for every single one of those characters. So rebooting them in the comic books and creating absolutely new personas for these characters would be confusing for those people that actually do follow one and the other. It may cause confusion with the fact that we're about to get a brand new Batman in the Robert Pattinson reboot. Most recently, at t called in Dan Didio and it turns out that they ended up firing him. This makes me believe that the 5G reboot won't actually happen because of the fact that at t has too much at stake here. To make that many changes to the original characters, to the classics that we love, that are still actually being portrayed in TV shows and cinema, it would be a huge mistake for them to do this. But I do see where you may want to do some story arcs where they change the characters, where there's an alternate version of those characters, but still keeping the classic characters there. But I'm not sure what at t is going to do. There's also a rumor that they may pass on the publishing rights to Marvel so that they can continue the comic books for DC. But I really do think that that is just a rumor because of the fact that there's just nothing in it for Marvel. There's no way that Disney would publish the comic books without actually getting more than just the publishing rights for the comic books. They would want to take the publishing rights for the characters themselves. And at t is not going to let go of the DC characters because they are very lucrative characters. And if anything, although they're not as successful in movie theaters as the Marvel characters, characters have been, they are more iconic. Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman are the most recognized comic book characters of all time. So I doubt that there's any legitimacy to the rumor that Marvel may take over the DC publishing rights. I don't believe that at t is ever going to relinquish the control of DC comic books. I do believe that they may end the publishing of the DC comic books themselves, but I do think that they're going to try to survive in some way or another. They will give the rights to somebody so they can continue publishing. But the thing is that comic book sales are not a huge profit for at t They're going to be focused more on the TV shows. They're going to be focused more on the movies. They're going to be focused more on novelizations, which tend to make a little bit more margin than the comic books themselves. But I do hope that DC Comics survives because I am a fan. I'm a collector myself. And I do hope that the stories that I've always grown up with, that I've always heard, that I've always read, do continue on for other generations to also follow. But let me know what you guys think about this story. Do you think that at t will ever let go of the rights for DC? Do you think they would actually consider giving the publishing rights to Marvel? Do you think that the 5G reboot should go on or shouldn't? Do you think that there's something about it that we should keep, that we should try to put into the movie theaters or put into the TV shows? Let me know in the comment section down below. And moving on to television, the trailer was dropped for the latest series that's going to be taking place within the world of The Walking Dead. The new series will be called Walking Dead World Beyond. This is the third series in The Walking Dead universe with The Walking Dead being the original series and Fear the Walking Dead being the second series that came out. I saw the trailer and I can't say that I'm too excited for this series because of the fact that I haven't even been really happy with the mainline series The Walking Dead in a while. They strayed too far away from the original comic book story and I think that they've done a terrible job with some of the adaptations of the stories of the comic 
comic books. I do love some of the characters that are in there. I do like the way that they portray some of the characters from the comic books. I think they did a better job in some of the roles than they did in the comic books. But overall, I've been very disappointed with the last two seasons of the show and I haven't been following them too closely because of the fact that I keep hearing bad things and then good things and more bad things about the TV series. I did try to give a chance to Fear the Walking Dead. I saw the first two seasons. I followed them sporadically and I tried to go back and try to watch them, but I kind of got lost and I just lost interest in that particular series. It just didn't catch my attention as much as I thought that it would. So I'm not too excited about this third series. I mean, I might check it out depending on what you guys let me know about the series, if you like it, or if the critics say that it's something that you must check out, or if it gets better reviews in the original two series, then I might actually check it out. But as of right now, I'm not too excited. I wanna know if you guys are excited about this third series that's gonna be set in the world of The Walking Dead. Do you think that it's already too much that we have? I mean, obviously there's a fan base there because of the fact that AMC is willing to invest into a third series that is still going to be going on while the other two series are going on. I don't know. It just seems like there's just way too many zombie shows that are out there with the three most popular shows being from the same universe. I don't know. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section down below. And in the world of toys, one of my favorite toy makers, McFarlane Toys, says that they want to re-release the original Spawn action figure. If you're not familiar with Todd McFarlane, he is the creator of Spawn. And after writing the Spawn comic book, when it came time to create a toy line that was based on the Spawn comic book, McFarlane didn't think that there was a toy maker out there that could actually do justice to the characters that he had created. So he created his own toy company so he can make his own toys, and by doing so, he created a new standard for the way that the toys should be made. His action figures were significantly more detailed, had better paint, had more coloring, and just looked better overall in the action figure space. This also led him to get the licenses for other franchises that other toy makers didn't want to take the risk on, which included some of the more darker and a little bit more sinister type TV shows and comic books. This included toy lines from like The Walking Dead, Stranger Things, Mortal Kombat. But McFarlane Toys started off with the Spawn toys and what he wants to do is re-release the original Spawn figure that he created in an updated version with the original mold. However, the biggest part of this news is that Todd McFarlane says that he wants to do this through Kickstarter. Now, this made a lot of people think that Todd McFarlane might have been in financial trouble because of the fact that a toy company is now asking for money from the fans themselves to be able to make another toy. However, it's not due to financial reasons is due to the popularity of Spawn himself. Spawn has just been in the comic books as of lately, and that is just not enough to drive the toy sales anymore. The live action adaptation of the movie Spawn came out in 1997, and that wasn't received well by the critics nor the fans. And since then, Todd McFarlane has been wanting to redo another reboot of the Spawn movie. He has a script that he has been working on, but it's been in development hell for such a long time that we're not even sure if we're ever going to get another Spawn movie. I think McFarlane recognizes this and he's going to try to do this to Kickstarter because he wants to give the action figure to the people that most cherish the character. I'm pretty sure that this is going to succeed. People are going to want to collect this particular action figure, but I'm not sure about paying $100 for an action figure that normally would go for about 15 to 20 bucks. But if you're a hardcore Spawn fan and you do like to collect action figures, maybe it is something that is right up your alley and you might want to check him out. He's going to be starting the Kickstarter soon so that you can put your pre-order in for this action figure. And if it succeeds, then you would be one of the people that would be getting one of those original uh, Spawn action figures from the original mold, but an updated version of it. But let me know what you guys think. Do you like McFarlane toys? Are there toys that you really like from the McFarlane line? Do you think this is a good idea for Todd McFarlane to do? Or do you think that the Kickstarter campaign is actually not going to work and the fans are not going to support it? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And last but not least, in the world of Star Wars, Disney finally dropped the official announcement that they're going to be releasing the entire Skywalker saga in 4K. Now, personally, I think this is just another way for Disney to try to get more money out of us and all i can say is shut up and take my money i mean it's star wars in 4k what am i gonna do i'm gonna have to buy it i own every other version of the movies already and i cannot say that i'm not gonna want to own them in 4k and to justify this purchase this is the very first time that the original trilogy is going to be released in 4k it's also the first time that the prequel trilogy is going to be released in 4k and the first time that the force awakens is going to be released in 4k the only two movies in the star wars universe that have been released in 4k formatting have been solo and the last Jedi. And it just makes the rest of my collection look weird when they only have two 4K movies and the rest of them are all Blu-ray. Now they're not just re-releasing the same thing that they've had. They are going to be including additional footage. They're going to be including additional documentaries that have never been released before or that were filmed specifically for this particular release. There will also be digital versions of the release which will include exclusive content for the digital release. But if you purchase the physical copies, you also get the digital release of the movies as well. Again, I think it's just another cash grab for Disney, but they know exactly when they have a cash count, they're going to try to milk 
with that for all it's worth. I'm one of those guys that as long as they keep putting out something that just slightly newer or it just has a different coat of paint on it and it's Star Wars, I'm probably going to buy it. And the price of this entire thing is going to be $250, which I don't think is such a bad price considering that you're going to be getting nine different 4K movies. But keep in mind that if you're trying to complete the entire collection of Star Wars movies that are out there, this will not include Rogue One or Solo. The reason is because they're technically not part of the Skywalker saga. They're standalone stories that are outside of the Skywalker saga, which only includes episode one through nine. However, they will be releasing a 4K version of Rogue One later on. But let me know what you guys think of the 4K release of the Skywalker Saga. Are you going to be paying the $250 price tag? Or are you going to wait for a sale? Are you going to be hoping that somebody gives it to you? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And thank you again for being here for another edition of This Week in Nerd. I hope that you guys had a good time and enjoyed the stories that we were talking about. Let me know in the comment section down below if there's a story that I missed that you guys wanted me to cover or is there something that you want me to cover in another video. We want to talk about as much nerd things as we can possibly can in this channel. Make sure that you guys are following us on all social media platforms for future updates and for future giveaways also make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel down below make sure that you guys leave a comment to let us know that you guys were here and on that note thank you so much for watching this video my name is mario and i can't wait to have you back here at all about nerd Invincible.